Every so often there's a moment in history when we have the opportunity to turn a corner and make a change for the better. In November 2008, our country, and more specifically the state of California, went through a drastic change. The election of 2008 had a huge impact on California and the outcome of Proposition 8. It started many heated, uh, many heated debates in this state. Uh, we all want the opportunity to be able to marry the one person that we love and connect with. And putting a restraint on that is unreasonable and unconstitutional. Today I will discuss how unconstitutional it is to ban marriage from a couple based on their choice of lifestyle, as well as marriage benefits and why everyone deserves those rights. It also does not harm a society in any way when two people of the same sex get married. Lastly, people argue that same-sex couples should not get married because they cannot procreate, when really they should be able to marry for that reason. Denying same-sex couples is a violation of the Constitution and their rights as a citizen. The First Amendment of the Constitution clearly states that persons' religious views or lack thereof must be protected, and the main reason for denying same-sex couples of marriage is that all major religions consider homosexuality a sin. According to balancepolitics.org, marriage by the state is a secular activity. The government claims that church and state are separate, but yes, that's it. But yet they deny gay couples of marriage because most religions consider it a sin. So if church and state are separate, then why is it that one of the reasons why same-sex couples can't get married is because most religions consider it a sin? Another reason why same-sex couples should be able to marry is so that they can have the benefits that other married couples have. According to freedomtomarry.org, uh, most, people most people's marriage is more than just a legal status. It affects them in many other ways, such as filing taxes, joint ownership, or property, insurance benefits and agency laws, and very important critical med medical decisions which one can only benefit from if you are married. For example, if a member of a gay couple that has been together for 20 years gets critically ill, visitation may not even be allowed since the other person isn't considered a spouse or immediate family member. It is unfair to deny these privileges to people because their relationship does not fit the state's definition of one. Also, gay marriage does not affect nor harm our society in any way. Marriage is between two people. How does it hurt society or people who are not involved in the marriage? It is a personal commitment that is no one else's business besides the couples. Who is it to me or anyone else to decide who can get married or who can't? It is unfair for, for, for society to dictate that two people can or cannot do when it, hurts, when it does not hurt anyone else in the process. If the church or certain groups disapprove, that's their right. However, it is not their right to stop two people from getting married. <laughs> the only thing that should matter in marriage is love. Not whether a man and a woman could get married or a same-sex couple can get married. Uh, Balancepolitics.org states that uh, denying these marriages is a form of minority discrimination. America was founded on the concept that the majority should rule that the rights of minorities should be protected. It is the main reason we have a Bill of Rights, as well as anti-slavery and equal protection amendments. Denying marriage to a homosexual couple is no different than denying marriage to a Hispanic couple, just because they fit the status quo. Like previously discussed, procreation should not be the reason why same-sex couples should not be able to marry. In fact, because same-sex couples cannot procreate, most couples will turn to adoption, which is a good thing, because there are so many kids around the country in need of adoption. While some may argue that raising a child in that environment is not positive or idea, ideal, there is no proof that raising a child in a same-sex household affects the child negatively. Like mentioned before, we have the chance to make a difference and change history. It's not fair or right to take away people's right to marry, whether it be with someone of the same sex of you or not. We live in a country where we are free, but yet not everyone has the right to marry is contradictory. Same-sex marriage does not harm our society in any way. Denying same-sex couples of marriage is unconstitutional and violates the rights of the citizen. 
Also, same-sex couples cannot receive the same benefits as other couples can unless they are married, which is also another reason why everyone should give same-sex couples a chance to be married. If we all come together, we can make a difference and better, our li better each other's lives. Folks are not here. Okay. Um, you have a pretty good uh, image to get started with and get our attention. I thought that uh, you explained what your uh, goal is going to be, but then it seemed like you actually had multiple goals that you're going to be arguing about, and I think you need to focus it a little bit more and then make the other things subservient to that main goal. As it was, it just seemed like we're going to do this and we're going to do this and we're going to do this and you got three different claims instead of three claims that are supporting a main proposition. Uh, I thought it was well organized. You did a good job uh, citing or transitioning from uh, one idea to the next. Um, the supporting material I thought was a little bit thin in places. I think you need to uh, for instance, develop the notion about the constitutional issue a little bit more. You're basing it on this notion that the First Amendment prohibits, uh, you know, the religious influence, so on and so forth, and that, and then there's this whole argument that says that the prohibition of gay marriage is entirely about um, sin and uh, religious beliefs, and I think that. Uh, that is the place where there's uh, the weakest part of your argument because the generalizations that you're making there, uh, they don't seem to be uh, substantial. I think there are better arguments to be making on this particular point. I thought you did a, a little bit stronger job talking about some of the uh, problems that people who are homosexuals face uh, when you know they are couples and they, there are difficulties that they might run into. I think you could make a stronger emotional appeal with the example of uh, somebody who is denied access to their partner who is sick or injured, something like that. There's, there's a great opportunity for some uh, emotional, motivational appeals there that I think is lost. Uh, let's see. Oh, back to your standard of fairness. It's dependent largely on this notion of love, uh, but you know, if you want to talk about the criteria, I think it needs to be applied to marriage. There are a lot of things that we love. You remember that one when you were a kid? I love pizza. Then why don't you marry it? Well, you know, because I can. You know that kind of thing. You know. <laughs> So, so you've got to be a little bit careful about using that as the criteria for what should be our justification there. You know, a lot of, you know, people are full of weird things that they love, and I'm not exactly sure that we ought to be granting them marital status. I love my tree, you know, that kind of stuff. I heard somebody who was trying to marry a, a monument or something not too long ago. Well, it wasn't a... There's a dude in Japan who married a beer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, there, there's some of those things that you just say, is that really what we're talking about here? And I think that you want to stick to uh, the relational... Uh, contractual social issues that are going on there and I think that uh, you'd be a little bit better off. The presentation, um, I can hear you. It seems like it's a little mundane. I, you should get a little bit more emotionally involved in it, have a little bit more force I, I think in your voice, uh, a little more script dependent than you want to be at this point in the semester. Alright, thank you.